I promised up to end up Robert's Home Theater PC. Mr. Heron, do you want to talk power consumption first? I would love to. Cool. The beauty of a portable system like this, and I built this from the beginning to be low power consumption. Biathlon. Biathlon. Best sport ever. It is very low powered. Between the motherboard, uh, a low powered CPU, notebook style components, including the hard drive and the optical drive, being a Blu-ray combo drive, let about 53 watts average. I've never seen it go above 60. I've never seen it hit 60 either. Wow. So very low power. Also, that means in turn, low heat output. There's not much heat and very little noise. I mean, there is a fan in the power supply and a fan on top of the CPU. Uh, you got to say, like, slowly. compared to certainly the, the Xbox 360 and the first generation PS3, totally. this uh, is silent. A third. A third the, third the electrical usage. Uh, literally over the month, my, my kilowatt power supply kilowatt power meter, I should say, actually estimates that I'm going to get about, uh, I think it said for a buck 90 for the month, it estimated in terms of usage that I am currently using and what the energy costs here are in the U.S. on average, which right now it's about almost 12 cents per kilowatt hour. So, Kuzmina's killing it in the biathlon. This is from the other day. Sorry. I, yeah, I know who wins. <sighs> but anyway, yeah, power <laughs> consumption has been perfect. Control-wise and software loads are still the big items that I'm working on. Getting everything I like. I'm, I'm sticking with Bluetooth devices. I don't know why. They seem to be doing really well. You were saying that you're actually your favorite remote control right now is the PS3 remote. Yeah, just it has similar buttons to a media center remote. Mm -hmm. I mean, literally, except for labeling, mm -hmm. most of the buttons are identical. But so, red, green, blue, yellow. And I had it on hand. That was okay. the other thing. And it's a Bluetooth device, so I bought a Bluetooth adapter for this, rather, rather inexpensive one. And it works I just great. I if I could move the Smarties here. Oh, yes. You, you put the, the Bluetooth adapter in the front. Is there That's any difference in performance? For the keyboard. Oh, okay. So I moved the keyboard's 2.4 wireless, uh, 2 gigahertz? 2.4 gigahertz wireless adapter. Mm -hmm. I put that on the front just to help see if it was making a difference compared to the back. The keyboard I was showing off last week, the, the Pyrex, Mm -hmm. This keyboard's actually worked out quite well. I like the layout of it, but I am. I did order a new uh, Logitech PlayStation 3 Media Board Pro keyboard that has the touchpad on the side, and it mm -hmm. runs on Bluetooth, just to see if I get slightly better reception. That's really what I'm looking for there in terms of the uh, control aspect of it. Well, let's talk about the software you're running, right? Because yeah. you're pretty much, at the moment, you're sticking with Windows Media Center. This is recorded over the air. Yeah, using that. Basically... K-World tuner that we showed off a couple shows ago, that little USB stick tuner. Which I think is magnetically, the yeah. antenna is <laughs> just stuck right on there. <laughs> this literally sits in my living room and I pick up full HD quality. I'm actually mm -hmm. living in the Bay Area here. It's pretty great in terms of our right. HD reception. Uh, it's a single tuner, of course, so I'm not doing dual tuner goodness, but anything I see that on TV that comes up in the integrated channel guide that Windows Media Center offers, I just click on it, hit record, it's done. And for that, it's just terrific. So what's the response time on this, since I'm completely unfamiliar with... Yeah, you're gonna have a to check. A faster <laughs> CPU would help in this situation. That's one thing I'll say. Like here, I'll hit the what would be the Windows button. I say the one dangerous thing about hold, hold the, up the, the PS3 remote because the one dangerous thing about that is if you you aren't thinking in terms of translate. If you can't translate PS3 into into Windows Media Center or normal remote control, it's like, do I hit the triangle or the square or the X or the? It's actually fairly intuitive the way, and I talked about that software last week that for, makes for this you. all work just right. <laughs> no, I mean, it's like... The I've never owned a PS3. But I if look you at put the PS3 uh, interface on my Blu-ray machine. Have you had the Windows Media Center style remote, though? Have you ever yeah. seen one of those? They're mostly it's, horrible. They, well, they can be, but the button layout is actually quite similar. Like, right. instead of the green button, like you would have with a Windows Media Center style remote, you have the PS3 button, which it maps right to that, and I can bring okay. this up. And my one complaint, though, I'll say about this is, like, with the, the, the decoding going on in the background, mm -hmm. Scrolling is not as fast as I would like it to be. Sure. It, it can be a little, and if you hold down something and you expect it to start scrolling, that doesn't happen with this controller, and I'm wondering if it does with the Windows Media Center style remotes. I'll loan you one. Oh, okay. <laughs> I will borrow it and check it out. But uh, I'm sticking with this for a couple of reasons. One, the integrated channel guide mm -hmm. and the built-in support for the, the digital over-the-air tuner. Okay, so your ideal, your ideal setup right now, Windows Media Center, my movies for accessing your movie collection, ArcSoft, Total Media Theater for Blu-ray. Are you going to play around with any alternatives to, to, to Windows Media Center, or are you kind of going to like quit and just tweak? No, I have to take a look at some of the other apps. I mean, there might be something out there that I like even more, and I'm going to start with XBMC, Xbox Media Center. There's mm -hmm. a great live CD that's available from a gentleman who calls the project the XBMC Freak Disc, <laughs> and it's essentially, it's a bootable CD you can load up, it's a live CD they call it, and it will load up the XBMC interface, but it's already optimized for Atom and Ion technology, so the drivers that I would need, wow. so software a full support. live CD that actually recognizes Atom and Ion, that's yeah, cool. Yeah, and, and he's integrated supposedly uh, oh. some, some, 
I'm not exactly sure. I'm still reading up on how they're doing it, but apparently they've got Blu-ray support now for playback in Linux. Probably not. It's probably a little on the gray side of things, but it, well, it apparently DVD works. Well, playback, and for the most, it, except it's certain apply, it originally was was gray. It, well, it was black. It was illegal. So I've Linux. got that too. There's also Sage TV. I don't know right. if we mentioned that just now, but that's definitely another app I want to take a look at. I want to look at those kind of tools mm -hmm. to see how they compare, and maybe one will give me a better experience. But I, having the TV tuner and having the channel guide information mm -hmm. provided by uh, Windows Media Center, that's one of the big things for me right now. And just the ability, like we were talking about, in terms of importing music and managing your movie files right. and your other discs and other multimedia content. I gotta say, Windows Media Player or Windows Media Center on Windows 7 is doing a pretty good job of all that right now, but it doesn't keep me from not wanting to check out other projects as well. And for the services that provide RSS links to their video content, What's the best tool for grabbing that kind of content right. as well? There's a product called Miro that's free. Get Miro, I believe, .com or .net. Which has improved quite a bit in the last couple of years. Because totally. when it originally came out, it was not named Miro. It was a Miro, democracy it was player, I think democracy it was called. Democracy player, yeah. It was, it, was, uh, it was an awesome concept that was not so well executed. At this point, it's really stable. If you want to use something other than, than uh, I wouldn't say Apple, not Apple TV, but iTunes, which I've been living with forever now. If you want to use something other than iTunes to grab your, your video podcast, your audio podcast, uh, Miro is actually a really good player for that. Cool. I'm, I'm finding, though, that a lot of the highest quality content, like Comedy Central has a beautiful <laughs> website with their where you can get pretty much every one of their shows streamed up to HD light quality, and it looks really great. But I don't see a, I don't see direct stream links to any of that content. Right. It looks like you have to do it through the web interface. So for that, well, I'm still using browser. Well, that's because they're trying to control your access to it because they want to keep you from downloading it. They want to keep you from storing it. They want to make sure they roll a video in front of totally. it every time, and they want to make sure they get paid for it. And the easiest way to do that is by you know live oh. streaming it, probably through Flash or Silverlight, and pre-rolling an ad every time. Now that you've said that, I, I now realize I will probably never see RSS links to my highest quality content, at least. Not for free. Well, maybe. Because they, they could do RSS something. links to let you the, to, to tell you that new videos are available. They're just not going oh, to totally. probably do RSS links to let you download it to your system until there's some sort of all-in-one encapsulated tracking system that will, you know, micro payments and yeah, we're still dreaming on that one. Oh, uh, yeah. Lenovo, by the way, if, if you were talking about the PS3 remote and, oh, yeah. and your wireless choices. Lenovo finally added the multimedia remote with keyboard to their US website. I want to thank to Josh from Georgia for the heads up on that. So you no longer have to go to eBay to get one that somebody brought over from China. It's 60 bucks and I think I'm going to order one of those while I'm waiting for the boxy remote to hit the street. And you've been all over Amazon.com doing what? Yeah, I have to say, we uh, had one of our viewers write in about, hey, were you aware that you can perform a great search on Amazon's Blu-ray titles and you can basically filter it by titles that cost less than 10 bucks and I have to say it's easy to do <laughs> and I've already found four titles that were just gems that I just had you know what I want those in my collection and the fact that they were under $10 some were as low as I think $6 and it was just like ta-da that's what I wanted and you know what it, it's easy it's simple and it can save you some bucks to get some content you probably want it's like rental prices so you know it's not the latest greatest titles but there's probably a few things in there that you'll want